passing specific information from one place to another, there's often a need to use a particular form. The FL message, the Fast Light Messaging software, is a tool that we have used on this channel for creating structured information in the amateur radiogram as well as the 16-line basic message format. We can also create custom forms with FL message in an extremely convenient way to be able to move information from one place to another. We're going to show you how we get that done with the QSP radio newsletter, walking you through the process of creating a custom form and then showing you how we transmit the custom form and then how we process that custom form once it gets to its destination. Stick around. Black one, black one. First, let's take a look at how to use a custom form in FL Message. We're going to use the specific example from the QSP radio newsletter. This video is not intended to be a replacement for the FL Message manual. We're going to just make sure that we can get to that. FL MSG manual will get you right there, and that will show you both the PDF version and the HTML version. So we now have that available, and we can get to wherever we need to be. It does talk about the use of custom forms in the manual, but we're going to have this video to walk you through some demonstration. We're going to demonstrate the use of the custom form with the QSP radio newsletter custom form. We're going to get that from the QSP newsletter page on the Black Swan Comics site. So www.blackswancomics.org will show us a menu for QSP, and there's an option for Join the Party. When we go to Join the Party, we want to start with download of the QSP custom form. That's presented in a zip file, so we can click on that, and we'll be given the option to download. On the Mac, it's actually going to open up the zip file. It's going to present you what's inside, which is a plain old HTML file. So we'll go ahead and download that. We'll allow, yes, we're going to download that. And now we can see it in our downloads. And there it is. So now we need to take this qspshare.html. Now if you've downloaded it on your system and you still have a zip file, you need to unzip the file and get to the HTML. It is the HTML file that you want. So let's start now, flmsg. If we go to FL Message, then we can pull down the File menu, and we go to Folders, and we're going to see we've got some options here in the .nbems. Now, on different systems, you might have a different location. For example, on a Windows system, you probably do not have .nbems under your home directory. That's all right. Whatever it is, if you pull down the File menu from FL MSG and go to Folders, you're going to be presented with the nbems folder that you need. Inside of there will be several folders. Custom is the one that we care about. We don't happen to have anything in custom at the moment. See, it's empty. But what we're going to do now is take the QSP share file that we just downloaded, the HTML version, and we're going to drop it into custom. Now in the custom folder, we have share with QSP. This now gives us the ability to go in FL message, pull down our form menu, and go to custom. And what do we have in custom? Hmm, we have only transfer form. So let's quit FL message and start it up afresh. Now we go to form, custom, and here we have share with QSP. By putting the QSP HTML file in the custom folder and then restarting FL message, we have this custom form available. And this is what it looks like. We have simple keys and values that are paired together. And in a blank form, we don't have any values except for the name of the custom form. So we can, at this point, click on the edit form, and that will start a web browser. And the web browser is going to show us what the form looks like. Scroll down in here and start to fill things out. And we can complete all of this We'll complete whatever activity we were on. We were on phone and NBEMS for 160 on 80 and 75 meters. Some of the other activity that we were engaged in. 
we were receiving some things like shortwave radio grant. This is a music show in the mighty KBC. I got all of those. And then in here we can describe whatever it is that we're doing. Had a lot of fun on the air working with our fellow volunteers. 7-3. And click on the submit form down at the bottom. And what we see is not only uh, FL message has updated, it actually shows all of the different things. We now have the ability to save. And it's going to give us some options, KD8TTE, so it's the call sign for what we've configured in our FL message. It's going to have a date and timestamp associated with it. And at the end is going to have .K2S. That is the extension that is used by FL message for a custom form. So we can go ahead and save that. And you can see where it is. It's underneath the ICS messages that's underneath our NBEMS folder. So we save that. This is a good example of the difference between form and format. A person is going to use the form, someone who doesn't necessarily know anything about radio. All of the information needed for that specific purpose is presented on a form. It's a consistent way to represent everything that a person needs to see. Using FL message in the custom form, the person has the ability to hit save and now we have a K2S file. All of the information has been formatted for transmission. It's a simple text file. It's lightweight. It's nothing more than keys and values separated by a comma. That very small and lightweight file can transmit quickly over radio so that on the receiving end, the K2S file can be opened up inside of FL message and displayed with the same custom form so that a person on the receiving end sees exactly what the person on the sending side created in the first place. Form is for the person. Format is how we structure information or data that can be used for storage or transmission. Now that you have completed the custom form, you need to transmit it. We're going to take that file and show you how you can move it from one place to another, and you have options. That format is independent of the transmission method. We can show now FL message being used to perform the transmission. We can show FL amp being used to perform the transmission, and we can also show RDOP. Each of these is a different stack but it is the same conceptual process of one layer providing services to a higher layer, making it possible to get the data from one system to another without having to worry about what's happening underneath. The non-radio operators, the agency personnel, shouldn't even need to know whether something came via email or whether it was moved by FM, VHF, or HF. We'll begin with KD8TTE transmitting the message to W8OMR. We're going to be using FL message. We can send directly from there. We're going to use the auto send feature of FL message, which is a broadcast. That's just a transmission. It's undirected, and whoever gets it, gets it. The good news is that W8OMR has a good circuit to KD8TTE. The message comes through. W8OMR is able to decode everything that's coming in. The checksum is performed. It checks out. And then W8OMR is able to display what was received. And it matches exactly what KD8TTE transmitted. The K2S file was sent from one station to another using that circuit as its network. That was FL message with a broadcast method. There is an option in FL message for unicast, and that's to use ARQ, the automatic repeat request. In that case, you place the station of the receiver down in the bottom left corner, and then you initiate an ARQ session the sender will call the receiver. The receiver automatically answers the sender, and they begin a process of transmission, 
and acknowledgement, transmission of the next section or block and acknowledgement. If there is a bad reception, the checksum at the receiving end does not work. Then the recipient will request retransmission of the same block until that block has a good checksum. And you can see that FL Digi is transmitting the contents of the K2S file wrapped in the ARQ protocol. The advantage of ARQ over broadcast is that if a checksum mismatches for a block, only that block needs to be retransmitted. In the case of a broadcast, if there is a mismatch in the checksum, there must be another transmission of the entire message for the recipient to get it and to correct it. Once the transmission is complete, the ARQ session will come to an end and the FL message at the sender and receiver will disconnect. At the end, the entire message has been received and it matches exactly what the sender sent. The third of four options that we will demonstrate today is FL AMP, that is to use the multicast protocol to move the message from one station to another. Multicast is kind of a combination of broadcast and the ARQ of unicast, except that it's not automatic. The message, like ARQ, is broken into blocks, but the acknowledgement of those blocks does not take place until the end of the entire transmission. In the amateur multicast protocol, the recipients will list which blocks they need. If all of the blocks are good, each of the checksums matches, then they will report confirmed. And once again, they have the entire file exactly as it was sent from the sender on the station of the recipient. And the circuit, once again, is the network. A big advantage of multicast is that we can have several recipients as we demonstrate in episode 54. The last option that we'll show is Winlink. Winlink is unicast, but it is the station to a radio mail server. Just like with email, the user is able to compose the message and then to use the attachment feature to put the K2S file in the system. On the receiving side then, the Winlink user is able to open the message and there is the attachment. It's the same K2S file. Once again, the radio was the network. So one way or another, the addressee gets the file. What happens now? FL message will allow you just to view it back in the form, but you can also process the data as we can demonstrate with our QSP editor program. Once we have the K2S file on the editor's machine, we run a program. It's not a complicated program. It's a little Python program that I wrote that reads all of this text, these key value pairs, and then interprets them. It interprets all of the data and then formats all of the information that's been presented in that QSP form such that I can take that I can highlight now the formatted for presentation in QSP information, and I can paste it into my working copy of the QSP radio newsletter. It is this mechanism that allows us to have all of these contributions coming in from various places, and for me as the editor very easily to be able to format all of the incoming messages. And there you have it. We're using the FL message application and custom forms to be able to give people a chance to put information into something that makes sense to them, to capture that information in the form of structured data. We then were able to relay structured data completely over the radio using a variety of techniques. The transport does not have to be tied to the data that we're moving. The ability to take those pieces, to put them together in a way that matches our need and our operating condition is what makes the radio service that we're using so powerful. 
we're going to follow this up and show more about how the QSP radio newsletter custom form is actually implemented, hopefully giving you some ideas about how you might be able to use that for your own use case. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, share it with others if you found it to be helpful, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Until next time, this is Radio KD8TTE, out.